Hi guys, welcome to another episode of my channel and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about port of entry experience when you're coming to America for the very first time. So now this is something I've always wanted to talk about and I'm so glad that I finally have the time to make the video and to put out this content because when I was coming to the United States, I was like really, really searching for people's experience because I had no idea what to expect. I was like trying to see what does it feel like, what happens when you get to the US for the first time, what... I really, really wanted to know what the process is, so, process is all about. So that's what this video is all about. If you've not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to do so by clicking on the subscribe button below. Also, do not forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it. And most importantly, drop a comment. Right. So without further ado, let's get started. So now the thing is this. No matter where you're coming from, no matter where the type of passport that you hold, no matter the type of visa that you have, you would always have to like encounter a um i think they call them um border control officer or cbp i don't know I, I can't remember right now but you always have to encounter somebody like we have immigration in nigeria for example you always have to encounter an immigration officer at the port of entry port of entry basically means your first um the first airport like the international airport where you landed him and yeah your first contact with an immigration officer in the united states so that's basically what port of entry means so when you embark from the airplane that's what i'll be talking about in this video and my experience is quite um different because when i got to the united states last year like that was like around august that was august not around august that was august right almost a year now so when you get um like i had a really long flight in my own case i had a really long flight i flew from um, Lagos to um, Qatar and then from Qatar to Atlanta. That's like a story for another day. But the advice is that don't do that to yourself. It's a really long journey that I would never wish on my enemy because I was I was airborne for like two, three hours. Don't do that to yourself. It's a bad idea. Anyway, so, but you know, when you are coming to the United States, you don't feel the stress. I mean, you're living in Nigeria, even if you had to stay in the airplane for 96 hours as long as i'm leaving nigeria or oh, more let's go there so anyway that's not the gist the gist is that when i got um so when you when you get to your destination um you would be instructed to um to they'll they'll show you like they'll show you how to get into like the airports like their um immigration office um uh, like office space or desk or something like that. I don't know the right terms for this thing. But when you disembark from the plane, you would, that's the first thing you encounter. You walk through like a, a corridor or something, but you're not gonna get access to your people, those that are coming to pick you up, your friends or family. You will not have access to any of that until you go through that port of entry, until you have an encounter with the uh, border control officer or border control, I don't know. Customer, yeah, customer and border patrol. I think it's CBP, customer and border patrol. Once you have that encounter with customer and border patrol officer. So now the thing is that um, having a visa, I should also clear the fact that visa is not a right. That you have a visa to enter to the US or any country does not mean they will let you enter. It's basically you asking for permission to enter. Now, there are numerous cases of people getting turned back at the port of entry. That's not even strange at all. It happens all the time. Not to scare you, but it happens all the time. So technically, what, what, what's going to happen at the port of entry is that you're going to have another interview, like a mini interview. Maybe not as crazy as the one you did at the embassy, but you're going to have like a mini interview, like a tiny mini interview to really corroborate the information that you provided at the embassy, right? So get your facts right the first thing that i will advise is this do not put all of your vital documents in your luggage bag that's that's very very key your visa your passport your i-20 your statement of accounts like your proof of fund every single thing that has to do with your academics or your visa i'm talking based on my experience as an f1 student your the document that you have might be different if you are not coming in through uh, uh, if you are not coming in with f1 visa but if you're coming with f1 visa make sure that all all, all your document your i-20 your state proof of fund your admission letter every single thing is um well filed in your carry-on bag the bag that you have with you on the airplane not the bag that you have in like the 
that they take away from you right make sure you have it handy also make sure you have a phone number of your school they call them dso i think it's the designated something officer basically what dso do dso is like a licensing officer between your school and immigration that's that's the best way to describe their function like they really, really work together with international students to make sure that they comply with immigration rules and stuff like that so make sure you have their phone number written somewhere that you can easily access okay so and um the third thing that i will mention is this it's not a rule but it's a very good advice you know when you're living in nigeria your friends and family when you tell them that you're living in nigeria the ones that are close to you usually they send messages they'll be like don't come back again oh baba just stay there forever please and please wipe out those messages before you land at your port of entry uh, this i've heard of people getting turned back because of that kind of conversation right so please and please wipe out those messages get rid of them delete them clean them out or don't respond to them in a way that shows that you're trying to leave the country or run away or stuff like that if people say it obviously in fact your best of friends to tell you that don't come back again will never ever come back again don't say yeah so before i call stuff like no i beg my coco bio if you don't understand your yoruba ask your yoruba friend to interpret what i said just now to you so the point is that you want to get rid of that you want to have your documents handy you want to get rid of any incriminating messages that your friends might have said to you jokingly even if they don't mean it so you want to get rid of stuff like that so when you get to the port of entry basically you would um, meet you would join a line right so i think there are like two lines one for like citizens and permanent residents one for those that are on visa so i was unlucky my experience in the sense that the line was so long that day i was there for like almost two hours i think they had like is like the system was down and also i flew into um atlanta jackson airfield um airport which is one of the busiest airports in the world so that didn't help either and the system was down like there was a lot of like lines so it was really frustrating but eventually it got to my turn and I was really nervous, but th this is this is why it's key that you do all of your visa processing yourself because you know what you put on your form, you know the truth about yourself. Somebody's not just filling out rubbish on your behalf, okay? So I was not thinking about like having like a mini interview. I just responded to those questions casually, which I realized might have landed me in trouble if I had lied on my DS-160 form when I was applying for visa at the embassy. So like it was in retrospect that i realized that so i got to the um border control officer and he was like hey uh what's up what are you in the us for i told him he collected my passport i think they did my fingerprint they took a picture of my face to see that i'm in the us already and then he went on asking me um what my parents do for a living i think that's the only technical question that i got asked like what 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 like what's your parents occupation your parents back at home what do they do for a living and i was like yeah this is what my parents do for a living and i was like okay good good, good. that makes sense and then it was like okay welcome to the united states and then i got stamped in they wrote like d of s on my passport i'm laughing because in retrospect it feels really good to like just go through without any like stress or anything like that so d of s means duration of state study which means that as long as you are enrolled as a student you are allowed to stay in the united states for as long as possible as long as you keep enrolling as a student right as long as you keep staying in school you are allowed to stay in the united states for as long as possible so and that was like my story basically but the things that i want you to live with that i want you to live with is that get rid of incriminating messages on your cell phone whatsapp messages instagram messages text messages get rid of those you don't want because more often than not if they ask take for instance i told them what my parents do for a living if that answer was like different from what i had said at the embassy it was like massively different from what i have said at the embassy they will take they will ask them to step aside for secondary inspection and then during secondary inspection that's when things start to get really ugly if 
they they might ask for your phone they might check your phone they might ask you to do all sorts of stuff like that and i also said you should keep your dso contact information very handy because if there's any issue there are instances where at the port of entry you would um be allowed to get into the country they wouldn't stamp you in officially but you'll be allowed to get to the country if you're missing documents or anything and then you probably have to like deal with that later okay so but if you have if you have any issue if you run into any issue you can always call your dso and then tell like they would always like come to your rescue and have you like help you as much as they can so that's my experience at um the port of entry in the u.s coming in via f1 visa uh, if you like the video um do not forget to give the video a thumbs up thumbs up do not forget to drop a comment and most importantly do not forget to subscribe to the channel i mean you've been seeing my videos why haven't you subscribed why it breaks my heart subscribe and i'll see you in the next episode how